Foster Parents Night Out is a service ministry of the faith community in cooperation with the Department of Human Services to provide regular monthly respite to foster parents. I think one of my favorite things is, is that everybody pitches in. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, oh, you're doing this for foster kids. I want to help. So one of our volunteers, her girlfriend, she made 60 pillowcases, and they're all different. And wow. so tonight we're going to hand them out and let kids pick which one they want. And a pillowcase is not just a pillowcase that you stick your pillow in. For some of these kids, it will be what they'll fill with their things when they go to a new home. Right. And so they'll have not a garbage bag full of little things, they'll have a beautiful pillowcase filled with love. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you everybody for being here. As you can tell, we're a little thin on volunteers tonight. I think we'll be okay, but we do have a lot of kids coming. It seems that families keep getting more kids. Um, so, you know, we're not adding any families, but we're up to like potentially 70 kids tonight. Um, so why do you come to volunteer at Foster Parents Night Out? Oh, I think that it's an amazing idea to let the parents have a break yeah. from the kids and they can't just, you know, hire any babysitter. They have to have specially trained people to watch the kids. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of a no-brainer to come and do that once a month. So what was the training like? It was like a three-hour all-at-once session and, you know, how to keep the kids safe. Mainly that was the biggest mm -hmm. thing and all the steps to do that. Was it intimidating to go through the training or? No. No, I was a little worried about the first night of Foster Care Night Out, not knowing what to experience and who was going to be there. And yeah, and what was it like? It wasn't too bad. It was very organized so that we just were assigned our area of kids to work with and yeah. then we just started getting to know them and played games and ate together and hung out. So it was pretty good. And how did you feel at the end of your night, your first night? Tired. <laughs> <laughs> but ready to do it again. Fantastic. Yeah. So why are you volunteering today? Um, it's one of those things that you leave inspired by the families and the parents. So, um, how long have you been fostering? Seven and a half years. Seven and a half years. When we took the classes for, to be a foster parent, they always stressed, take care of yourself, make sure to get breaks, and I know I was thinking, oh, sure, I'll be fine, just <laughs> give me the babies. <laughs> and then reality set in, and I think the average parent knows that they need breaks. Mm -hmm. But even more so, the foster parent who's dealing with these struggling kiddos who take a lot of energy physically and emotionally, but unlike the average parent, you're less likely to find people to watch them for you. Because the children have special behavior, emotional, sometimes medical needs, and it's kind of a lot to ask someone to watch a group of six. Um, it can be very overwhelming if you don't know what you're getting into. And how about for you guys? Is it overwhelming for you guys? Never. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we started as respite care providers. About 2006, one of the children that we were providing respite care for, the foster parent could no longer provide care and right. move them to us, and we became full-time foster parents then. In that time? We've had a conversation about this recently. More than 20? Yeah. Well, we have seven kids total, two bio, one adopted, so that would make four, four. foster. Oh, my word taking all the kids for us to be completely alone to go somewhere. Just for an evening. I think we've done it twice in the last two years, and both were, like, overnights to go to a foster parenting uh, refresh conference. <laughs> um, it's one place where we can go drop off all the kids together, and it doesn't, they don't have to be divided by bio or adopted and foster kids, well, which age. I think is awesome. Also, it feels really special to them. So it's not just like, oh, we're finding a babysitter for them so we can go do something mm -hmm. without them. It's always geared toward the kids and entertaining them. Like, it's their favorite time of the month. Is it FPNO this Even weekend? Even though it's listed as Foster Parents Night Out, it really the is foster kids, kids look forward to it every month. We love that break. It's, like, the only time that we can afford to go out to eat, and we're not feeding, like, nine people. Yeah. <laughs> and it really is the only time we're alone without the kids. But it's just, it's so important to me to see that they value that time. I mean, the boys love playing basketball. They loved the magic stuff. They loved the yo-yos. The reptile man. The reptile man. Um, my 12-year-old was spent like one whole night. Volunteer sat there for most of the night and worked on guitar with her. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, lots of just little stories about making each of them feel important. The first time we went, I think we went and we sat in the car for half an hour of silence. Yeah, the peace yeah, and quiet. In the car yeah. was beautiful. 
so I could come back and refresh and be a good mom again the next day. Yeah. Um, we usually plan at least a week in advance because it's yeah. nice. It's four consecutive hours and that is fabulous. And you get to know the workers that deal with your kids on a monthly basis. And I've really fallen in love with one of them who emails me periodically. We went through a rough spot as a family when a foster kiddo left who'd been with us for over two years. And she emailed me during the week saying that she was praying for us, saying um, how much they missed the little girl too. So it it gave, it gave me a, a spiritual connection. The volunteers there, they remember the oh, kids yeah. by name, they talk to us, check in with us every month, and even with other foster parents that we typically wouldn't see or have a connection with. It's like every month, how you doing? What happened this month? Did yeah. you get a new placement? You know, what's going on? And I think that's important because in everyday life, there, I mean, we have family and friends, but they don't live in our world. They don't understand what being a foster parent means and the coming and going of kids and the heartache of working with bio families. And I mean, that's something that you don't get from everyday people, but people involved with the system, other foster parents and volunteers at FPNO do understand that. It's like one of the hardest things I've ever done. It's also the most rewarding thing. Like when you see the light go on, when you see the heart start to melt, when you see the change in their attitude and behavior, it just, it's, it's amazing. Like <laughs> it's worth every tear. It's worth every scream. It's worth every, you know, sleepless night. You will grow extremely attached to these children. Yeah. And there will come a time where they're going to leave. And sometimes there's nothing you can do about it because there's the law involved and various other issues. And sometimes when they go, you're just like, oh man, <laughs> you know, that's what that, that's why it's a higher calling sometimes when it feels like it, like, how can we be parents and let these kids go later? Cause like for me, I'm like, I don't know what they're going to do in the future. Mm -hmm. It breaks my heart because you want to keep, um, I don't know, sorry, I'm crying, but you want to be their dad forever. You pray that the Heavenly Father will take care of them. I've had people tell me, you just, you can't get that attached. You can't, you know, you know they're leaving. You just have to care for them and not get attached. But you can't ask me to do my job <laughs> and yeah. not get attached. Like you have, that's what they need. They need an attachment. They need love. They need understanding. They need acceptance. They need a mom, even if they don't know that that's what they need. You have to be their parents and you have to provide everything that they need because it makes their heart better. It makes them better in the long run. It doesn't matter how wounded you are because you're you know, old, we've made the choice to do this. It, it's our choice and we know that it's hard and we continue to do it. They have been put in a situation where they have no choice or control. Mark chapter nine tells us, he took a child and put him in the midst of them. And taking him in his arms, he said to them, whoever receives one such child in my name receives me.